if you're going through a heartbreak, any type of loss, any type of healing from trauma or whatever it may be, and you feel like you're stuck, if you feel like things are just in this never ending cycle, I'm telling you, you have to accept it. But it's not the acceptance that we are taught. I wish somebody would have told me this, and this is so simple, but you have to accept it, not just accept that it happened, but you have to accept that it will forever be a part of who you are. Just recently, these last few days have been very difficult for me. It's been a buildup of the last three weeks, really. But, you know, most of you know about my past relationship and how it motivated me to start YouTube and a lot of things. But I accepted everything that happened. I accepted the heartbreak. I accepted the pain. I accepted everything. But one truth I was running away from was the, the fact that this heartbreak and this relationship and this experience will forever be a part of me and it will forever change the way I look at the world. It will forever change the lens that I look out through, you know, and see the world. So I made a video the other day, you know, I was in a tree and I was talking about acceptance and peace and things like that. And I talked about how when I get down, I go outside in nature and I reground myself and I connect with nature and things like that. But before I got in that relationship, I stopped doing those things. I did those things as a child, but you know, as I got older, I just got distracted and I got disconnected. And then I met my ex-girlfriend. I remember the first time I took her out, one of her first times ever going to New Orleans, or her first time really experiencing New Orleans. I took her to a park and walked around and you know, she was kind of dressed for the adventure. I was kind of, you know, dressed up in my normal type of style. And she was running around and she was playing. And I'm not going to lie to you, it, it made me feel some type of way. I was kind of irritated by the fact, you know, that she was moving around and, you know, she wasn't sticking around me. But it was more so I was jealous. I was jealous that she was immersed in this experience and that she allowed herself to be a child. She didn't allow herself to grow up and be, you know, like malice or callous to the world. And I really envied that. And, um, you know, after after I dealt with those emotions and thought about it, I, I told her about it, you know, and I appreciated her for showing me how to be a child again. So after that, whenever we would go out, I would kind of dress down so I could get dirty and we would climb trees, we would lay in the grass, we would just do everything. And it made me feel like a child again. You know, it made me feel alive again. And, you know, now that things are done, those things have still been left with me. And I have to give her that appreciation. I have to, you know, show that gratitude because if it wasn't for her, I don't know if I would ever got back to that side of myself. And, you know, I'm just saying all that to say you have to understand and accept that no matter what experiences we go through, no matter who we come in contact with, those people leave a stain on us forever. And those things can be good or bad depending on how you look at it. I feel like in that relationship, I was there to teach her unconditional love. Um, I feel like it was definitely an absence of that in her life, and it made her lose a lot of hope. Um, I taught her about self-love and things like that, and she needed those lessons, she needed those things, and she taught me about self-love, and she taught me about setting boundaries because, you know, some of the things we went through, I allowed my boundaries to be pushed. I allow, you know, some of my self-love and respect to be put on the back burner trying to heal someone. And I also, you know, she also taught me that there's limits to what you can do for a person if you're not doing for yourself. I'm the type of person, if I like you and I love you, I'm all in for you. You know, forget about me. I'm, I'm here for you. You know what I mean? And there, there's no limits to what I can give you. Don't worry about me. I can pour from an empty cup. I'll just make something up. That's the way I roll, and that's not healthy. And she taught me that. So no matter how anyone could look at it from the outside looking in, nobody will truly understand. And I know there's lessons and things that she have taken from me, and, you know, vice versa. And some of those things we can't even deny. No matter what type of emotions we feel, no matter what's going on, no one can deny that because that's just what it is. And you have to accept that. And, you know, when you're first going through these certain things, I know you feel real sad. Maybe it's your parents. Maybe it's, you know, a relationship. But you have to understand you are your own person. You know, you got to live your own experiences. And if, you know, you don't have a good relationship with these people and you weren't able to end things cordially, it should motivate you. 
If you don't have a great relationship with your parents, that should motivate you to have a great relationship with your children. And if you don't want to have children, then, you know, just focus on having a great relationship with yourself. And if you know you go through certain things and things don't work out, it can teach you a lot of what you need to do. My apologies. Um, kind of threw me off. These situations, they just teach you what you need to do. And most of the time we feel really bad after we split with certain people or after we lose certain people. Because most of the time these people give us something that we didn't have. Like I mentioned before, she had that childlike energy. Whenever I would come, she would run out of the house and jump in my arms. And she would smile and laugh like a little kid. Even the way she breathed was like a little child. And those little elements of the way she was... And the small things she did, you know, the small but big things she did, like, you know, making crowns out of flowers. And th I didn't have that in me. You know, I did a lot of things. I made a lot of crafts. I used to make a clay pots and stuff out of clay we found, all those things. But it was that energy behind it I didn't have. So when she was no longer around, I started to miss that because I lacked that. You know, some people lack that confidence and some people lack that that security type of feeling and you know we lack certain things and people feel that void for us so when they're gone and we lack that we feel empty we have a hole inside of us and most of the time we don't know where to look for those holes so we just feel that pain but if you really think about it when you lose somebody and you really understand why you hurt you really understand what it was that you lost you uh, you accept that you find that pain and then you become Whatever it is that you lack, if you lack that childlike energy that you miss from somebody, become that. If you lack that confidence that somebody around you once had, become that. You have to take that time to go back and think about what it is you need to do. You need to take that time to go back and work on yourself to improve yourself. Because at the end of the day, no matter what dreams, no matter what promises, no matter what was put on the table before you, you are going to be there by yourself, for yourself. And I'm not telling you you're going to live a lonely life and you're never going to find love or you're never going to find happiness. But you have to understand that at the end of the day, you are with you and that's all you truly have. You will find people. You are special. People will love you. People will want to be around you. But when you go in that ground, when it's over for you in this realm, it's only going to be you. So that's why you have to live your life for you. You have to live your life the way you want to. And sometimes it feels like things are not going to get better, but you have to let them get better. And you have to understand everything is not going to have a reason. We always want closure. We want reasons behind everything. We want to know why. Or why couldn't you let me do this? Why couldn't you just do this? You can't ask those things. You can't. Everyone doesn't have an answer. Everything doesn't have a reason. But time heals everything if you allow it to. The things that don't even have reasons, the things that no one has answers for, time heals it. You will grow. You become stronger. When you're lifting weights, when you're running marathons, when you're training and doing all these difficult things, those things don't get easier. You just get stronger. Because if you take a little time off, what happens? They get a little more difficult. So it's a constant uphill battle and you have to keep moving. You have to keep fighting. You have to keep accepting things. If I was to let the past few weeks knock off all my progress that I made, I would I would be cooked. But it was a buildup and I didn't recognize it. I tried to hide from it. And I'm going to be open and honest with y'all too. I was out and about. I was sitting there with a group of my friends and this little lady walk straight up to me and when I notice I look up and I jump back this girl looked exactly like the mother of my ex I'm talking about exactly the same teeth the same lips the same note the same everything I went to call her by her name miss you know and she was like um I really like your curls and I was like who are you related to and, you know, she said she was from a place far away. It was still possible they were related. 
but it, it just stunned me. It, it was like, what in the hell? And then a few days ago, I went to the hometown of my ex, you know, where I used to go and spend all the time where we made all our memories. And I had been avoiding going there for a long time. I was running away from those things. You know what I mean? I went there and I had some type of energy on me. And then I came back. I had a dream about it at night and then came back, had another dream about it. And for the first time in, you know, months or weeks, I finally had a dream about it where I, you know, felt that energy again. Um, for some reason, you know, they had moved away and her parents and siblings were left behind. Well, one of her parents and her siblings were left behind and they got in a car accident. And I was driving my car. I pull up and I see him like, what's going on? So I stopped. They were all shaking up. So I told him, you know, just get in and I'll bring y'all up there. And, you know, it was like a six hour drive. I brought him up there. And, um, you know, the word got up there before I got up there. So everybody knew. So I got up there. You know how in the movies, the people save the day and they just walk away. They don't want praise. They just, they were just doing what they were called to do. You know, like the man will save a child from a burning house. And they're like, who saved you? It's like that man over there. And by the time the camera pans, he's all the way down the road because he didn't do it for that praise. So I brought him there and I'm turning around to go, you know, walk down the road, kind of get away and get that Uber. And I see my ex standing behind the gate peeking. And I seen, I was like, oh, snap. It like, it shook me. And I'm like, all right, all right. So I back up a little bit, and she was behind the gate, and it's like we synced up. You know how in the movies they'd be like, you know. So we did that a few times, and I was like, all right, this is ridiculous. So I walked, like, around the gate, and I just looked. And when I seen her, I was paralyzed. I was just looking at her. And we used to do this a lot, too, whenever we would, you know, take our space away from each other. And when we see each other again, it would just be like paralysis, just like when I first met her. And I just stared there looking at her. She stared there looking at me. I'm looking. And I don't, I don't really know what was going on in my head, but I just smiled. I was like, mm. Mm -mm -mm. So I turned around. I walked a few steps, and I couldn't really move. When I turned around and looked, she was sprinting straight at me. I still couldn't move, couldn't react. She jumped in my arms and grabbed my neck and just hugged me and cried. I cried, too. So I just fell down on my knees, holding her, crying and embracing. And I woke up and I smelled her. I was like, here we go again. Here we go again. So I just sat up. I didn't really entertain it that much. I kind of digested. I kind of ran away from it. I'm not going to lie to you. But, um, you know, I've mentioned this many times before. I tell as many people and explain thoroughly. You never want to run away from these things because it will snowball and it will get much worse. I had many instances where I pushed things far, 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 far down. And when they were finally triggered, they have an effect 20 times worse. You know, but I didn't notice how much I was running away from certain things. And when it finally hit me, it did hit me pretty good. But I was, you know, I had built myself up over these last few months pretty well. But um, you just got to realize the more you run away from something, the longer it's going to take to heal. And I reference the beginning of this video. I, I didn't believe that I was running away from things, but I was. I ran away from a lot of things. I distracted myself from a lot of my pain and a lot of my sadness, and I kept myself very busy. And it was no wonder when I was on my marathons, you know, when I posted 65 days in a row, I felt amazing. I had no time to think about it. I was working. But the moment I take a break, I would feel like crap. So I would rush back to start posting again. Now I take a few more days and I felt like crap, crap. And I would rush to post again. And then when I started burning myself out, because I do literally everything, I'm wondering where is this energy coming from? But it was because I didn't take the time to heal myself properly. And I didn't accept that not only I experienced something, and, you know, I appreciate this and I appreciate that, but I was not accepting wholeheartedly that this experience will be a part of me for the rest of my life. I felt guilty. I never compare people, you know, like if, let's say 
I meet a girl, I don't say, oh, well, she's not my last girl. I don't, I don't do that. And I'm definitely not going to verbalize that to anybody. That is wrong. But, man, literally almost every experience, there was some type of reference to her. And, you know, when our relationship was, you know, when everything was going good, I kind of felt bad talking about it so much. I was so happy. I was so proud of it. But anytime anybody would say something, I would always have a reference story. And it felt like bragging, but I wasn't. I was just truly happy. And, I mean, it's, it's the same thing still happens to this day. Whether it's something about ice cream, whether it's something about pizza, whether it's something about trees or fishing or swimming or guitar, or music, it doesn't matter. You know, and I'm, I'm still young, so I still have a lot of experiences to feel you know, these holes and things like that, but you just got to let go. And it's crazy that letting go or acceptance is a part of letting go. And a part of letting go is acceptance. This is funny how that works. It's like you have to accept the fact that you're letting go. But I don't even know how to explain it. But in the grand scheme of it all, when you go through things like that, it it makes things a little bit scary. Um, now I'm stuck in between a place to where I would like to have somebody around, but I don't. Um, I'm not going to say I don't trust people. I just trust people to be who they are. But um, it's just a sensitive time in my life. I don't mind being with, you know, one person. I, I, I prefer that, you know what I mean? I don't have the energy to run around and entertain a bunch of people and, you know, just I don't I don't have the time for that. That's not my style. But it, it does feel nice to have somebody around you and to have somebody support you and just have somebody you can count on. And that can come with your friends and family too, but it's nothing like having, you know, your own person. And I don't mean that in, in that possessive way. Because, you know, I give myself to my person. You know, the other way around, I mean, it happens, but that's not what I'm looking for. I'm not loving you for the benefit of me. I love you, you know, for you or whatever. But um, I don't know. It's, it's just, like I said, man, it's scary. Because you're stuck in between the place of wanting a person, wanting a partner. But you don't know who's the right one. And you never do until you do. When I first saw her for the first time, I didn't know what would happen. I knew what I wanted to happen. But when I met her for the first time, I knew what it was. And we get caught up in these dreams and, you know, we fall in love with the idea of what it could have been. I was in it for the long haul. I was in it for everything. But everybody don't have that unconditional love. It's just like... In this period of time, you know, I would love to experience those beautiful moments again, but I don't have the time for, I don't have the time for destruction. So I've come to the conclusion that it happened. I'm glad it happened. I learned a lot. I wish everyone the best, you know, I wish her the best. Life must go on and I must carry those lessons on with me forever. And there's nothing wrong with that. I don't need to ignore my sadness. I don't need to ignore my sorrow, but I also don't need to wallow in it or weep. Because I don't have to. It's just time to move forward. Yeah. That's just what it is. So, I hope through hearing me vent a little bit. It's not really my style. I don't really like to make things too personal. But I think through what I said and the message I was conveying, I think... 
it will kind of make some changes to your life because like I said that's not my venting to the camera and you know venting to you and really making this more so about me is not really my style but for something like this I kind of feel like you have to see somebody go through it and see exactly what they're doing and not be just given insight and perspective and hypotheticals or anything like that I always speak from personal experience and I always reference my own life and the things I'm going through and the things I've been through but sometimes you just need to hear what somebody else is uh, you know is going through to kind of show you where you may be going wrong but I hope this conversation helped you I hope you learned something and um Life must go on. I love you. Take care of yourself. And we are in an age of acceptance, healing, and embracing life. You take care of yourself, and I will talk to you soon.